Welcome everyone. Our next talk is titled Optimizing ID Allocation for Low Memory Devices. Our speaker today is Matthew Wilcox. Could you all please give a very warm welcome to Matthew Wilcox. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm aware I'm the last thing between you and dinner, so I'll try not to run over. I'm here to tell you the story of Joe. Um, Joe works for Acme Pty. Uh, they are based on West Island, but they have a development office in Auckland, and that's where Joe works. Um, unfortunately, Joe's quite shy and, and can't be with us today. But uh, Joe is responsible for Acme widgets. Uh, he, he's responsible for the, li uh, for the Linux driver for, of Acme widgets. Um, Joe assures me that uh, the widgets are phenomenally popular in Australia, but I haven't been to JB Hi-Fi yet to pick one up for myself. Um, the, 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 driver is available, the source is available under the GPL, it's just not in the kernel. <clears throat> so the, 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 the history of the uh, development of the, uh, the, the, the widget driver, uh, back in the 1980s, Acme Corp um, developed an ISA card uh, for their widgets. Um, and you can have up to four uh, ISA widgets um, in any given machine. You might have more than four ISA slots, but the way we used to configure ISA cards is with jumpers where you would set the I.O. addresses that any given card would respond to, and there are only four different possibilities, so it was quite straightforward to write a driver. You just said, well, probe each of these four addresses and uh, we'll, we'll have an array of up to four um, struct widgets. And you know you can you can leap over that fine. There's, there's no problem here. This is great. And then uh, the 1990s came along, and we, uh, we 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 moved as an industry from ISA to PCI. And uh, you you might well be able to have um, dozens of PCI widgets in a, a large machine, but Acme Court weren't all that bothered about selling into that market. So they just like, well, you know, we'll just double the number of cards, so now you can have up to eight cards. They can be a mixture of PCI and ISA. This is, this is fairly common uh, of, of drivers from this era. Um, it's, it's, it's really not that much of a limitation. If you had more than eight devices, well, it just wouldn't drive them. You know, you know they were under time pressure, right? They wanted to ship the driver quickly. Um, this, is, this, is, this, this is good enough. Uh, but then, then Acme Corp decided to introduce USB widgets. And thanks to the magic of USB hubs, you can have dozens or hundreds even um, of uh, USB widgets in a single machine. So it's time to use a real data structure for this. Unfortunately, Linux has one. Um, it's called the IDR. And um, this lets you dynamically allocate the, uh, the, the number of uh, the array. Essentially, this, this is giving you an array, and you're just saying, put this, um, uh, put, 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 put this, this data structure I've allocated into this, into this array, and uh, let me know where you put it. And then you can iterate over each um, entry in the IDR and call a function saying, you know, do, do, do the thing to the card. So this is good. <clears throat> But it turns out this isn't the only thing that we need um, ID. We don't, we don't just need a, a per card ID. It's not as you have an ID for each card. Um, each card can have a session. And it turns out you can have hundreds or thousands of sessions on a card. Um, but we don't need to do a lookup of pointers in the ID, in, from the ID. So the, the IDR is a little inefficient because we're storing an entire pointer, 32 or 64 bits, uh, for each ID that we allocated. And if we're not going to use all that information, uh, maybe we can do a little bit better uh, from a memory consumption point of view. And so that's what the IDA data structure that we have uh, promises, that, that it will save you memory by using only one bit to represent an allocated ID. Um, so a little bit of history. Uh, back in 2002, the IDR was introduced. Um, Tejun, who is uh, now in charge of uh, C groups, um, uh, implemented the IDA as, as, as a variation of the IDR. Um, 
back in 2007. And then um, Rusty got a little bit annoyed about trying to use the, uh, the API that Tejun had written. So he added the simple API, which wraps around the comp more complicated API that uh, Tejun had implemented. Um, and that, that happened in 2011. And uh, I was just talking to Rusty earlier, and he said uh, he was hoping somebody would come along and, and, and finish cleaning up the, uh, the API for him later. And so it wasn't until 2018 that I did that. <clears throat> so that's the promise. The promise is that we will store, that it's going to be more memory efficient to use the IDA than the IDR. But here's what, what happens. So this data structure that I've got up on screen right now, um, that is embedded into the thing which allocates. So in, 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 in the struct widget, we have one of these struct IDAs. Um, so before we have allocated a single ID, we have already consumed either 48 or 32 bytes um, in, in, in the data structure that we've, that, that, that's, that's controlling the session IDs, um, just setting up so that we can do an allocation, um, which seems quite a lot allocating 48 bytes to allocate precisely zero things. Um, oops, sorry. <clears throat> um, and, then, and then the first time that we allocate something, uh, this, this is how the API works. You, you start off by calling IDA pre-get, um, or you're using Rusty's API and it calls IDA pre-get for you. Um, that allocates eight IDR layers. It doesn't really matter what an IDR layer is, um, but they are quite large. Um, over 2,000 bytes. So the way that Linux works is that we have this thing called the slab allocator or the slub allocator, depending um, on your config options, but uh, gen generically it's known as the slab allocator. And the way this, it, 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 um, it allocates pages. The currency of the Linux memory management system is pages. And so it will allocate a pair of pages and allocate three of them making a little bit over six kilobytes of memory because there isn't quite enough space to fit more than one per page. So rather than waste almost an entire, uh, almost half a page of memory, it says, well, it's gonna be slightly better if I allocate a pair of pages and allocate three from it rather than allocate a page and allocate one from it. Um, and then the IDA uh, code allocates 128 byte IDA bitmap where it will actually store the bit. So we start out by allocating six pages. It will store a single bit. And these, um, these pages are chained, uh, are, are, are per IDA. So this is, so for each IDA that you have, so if, if, if you have four widgets, each of these is going to have six pages allocated to it they're just sitting there doing nothing, waiting for you to need them, which you end up not ever, generally, you, you almost never end up needing them. Um, and it turns out that because we're allocating this IDA bitmap, this is actually less efficient than just using the IDR directly. Um, so some device drivers are actually, that, that, that you, you think are doing the wrong thing by using the IDR, uh, when they could just be using the IDA, are actually saving memory. <laughs> Um, so that's, that, that, that I, I would call that a bug. <clears throat> it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a performance bug, but it is wasting a not insubstantial amount of memory. Um, oh, and, and a little flaw in the API is that if you forget to call IDA destroy, and about a third of the users of the IDA did in fact forget to call IDA destroy, you would then leak that memory. Uh, nobody would ever get that memory back. So, um, Rasmus Villemos, and I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he's, he's, uh, he's Danish. Uh, Rasmus uh, proposed this thing called the tiny IDA, which would be a lot more efficient. So 24 bytes on 64 bits, or 16 bytes on 32 bits, that's about half of the size in order to allocate zero IDs. But once you started to allocate IDs, it would, um, it would start out by allocating just like eight bytes and it would double that to 16 bytes and then to 32 bytes once you started to need more, byte, more, more, more bits from your allocator. So th this, this was a great idea, um, except 
that it really didn't scale up. So the IDA would scale up to thousands, millions of bits being uh, allocated. Um, this was going to be constrained by how large you could make a single allocation in the kernel, and um, that starts to get much, much harder the larger that you grow it. So um, accepting Rasmus's proposal would have required um, users, in all, um, programmers, to identify which IDAs might grow large and which IDAs were guaranteed to remain relatively small. And that's a very hard thing to ask people to do. Now, coincidentally, and if you follow the URL that I put on the previous slide, you'll see that at the, at the time I had already proposed a patch um, to use the radix tree instead of the IDR as the basis for the IDA. And th this, this was actually a byproduct. I, I didn't know about this problem at the time that I proposed this. I was very much focused on the IDR, and I saw the IDA as um, a distraction. It wasn't something I was particularly interested in. I, li I, I, I was looking at um, converting the uh, I was just looking at unifying the IDR and the radix tree. I was only interested in the IDA because it was a customer of the IDR. So I had to fix the IDA before I could fix the IDR. Um, so this is actually slightly better than um, what had been proposed by Rasmus. Um, it, it only occupies eight bytes on 32-bit. And I, I, I think that given um, sufficient motivation and time, I could have probably got it down to uh, four bytes on 32-bit because uh, we're only kind of incidentally using the GFP mask. Um, for those who don't know, the GFP mask is how um, Linux says, oh, you should allocate memory in this way. Um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't actually being used we, for the IDA. We, we, we pass in GFP flags to, using a different mechanism. The, uh, the problem was that the radix tree was abusing the GFP mask to also store additional information. But uh, yeah, we, we, we could have done without it, but we, we were moving in a different direction, so um, there, was, there, was, there was no time to, uh, to make that optimization. So um, as of 4.11, uh, we, we, ha we had the, uh, the, the radix tree-based IDA. And so this, this works by storing um, the initially allocated bits directly in the root of the tree as what, what the radix tree calls an exceptional entry. Um, and I've, I've, I've detailed how all that works, but um, the, the, the upshot is that the first 30 bits mean that you don't need to do any allocations whatsoever. It's all stored in that um, eight bytes that are allocated in, in your internal data structure. So that's good, right? I mean, you, 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 the, the first 30 bits are free. Um, and then the, the, next, um, the next 1,023 bits, well, I guess the, the next 900 and something. Anyway, the first 1,023 bits, um, that only costs you a single 128 byte allocation. Um, so rather than allocating um, six, uh, yeah, six pages, 24 kilobytes, We've, uh, we've only allocated 128 bytes so far. Uh, we are winning. Um, once we get above 1,023, we start to allocate a little bit more. There's uh, 576 bytes for a radix tree node. Uh, and then we store the, the IDA bitmap that we had been using. We store that down in uh, slot zero. And then we start using a bitmap in slot one. And then once we run out, once we get to ID, 1,054, we allocate another 128 byte IDA bitmap and start using that until we get up to 2,047 and so on and so on and so on. Um, if we ever get up to 65,536 IDs, we would then allocate another layer of the, uh, the radix tree and repeat ad nauseum. Um, so Ras Rasmus did us all a huge favor uh, he, he, did, he, he wrote some instrumentation for the IDA, and he gathers some, some statistics. 
And you can see, I hope, I had to shrink the font a little bit, but I think you can all see um, there's, there's, there's 20 samples that, that he posters as argument for uh, how to do things, uh, for, for, for why his tiny IDA should be used. And it became um, an, an argument for why my Radix tree uh, IDA should be merged. Uh, 16 of these 20 samples would fit into the 30 bits that require no allocation at all. That's a, that's a nice win. Uh, three of the remaining four will fit in a single allocation of 128 byte IDA bitmap. And one of them requires one Radix tree node, 25 IDA bitmaps, and that works out to about 3.8 kilobytes, which is a little better than the 24 kilobytes that was going to be used for every single one of these uh, IDAs. Uh, so Rasmus was estimating 250 kilobytes of memory savings on his laptop. That's not insubstantial. Um, he, 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 one of the other things he said is the amount of memory being used by one IDA is larger than the entire subsystem that uses it, <laughs> which, which is silly. Somebody should have noticed this before, but of course we've all got gigabytes of memory on our phones, let alone our laptops. You know, we, 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 we don't notice these things anymore. It's only when people are trying to do Internet of Things, small, um, embedded kind of things, that, that, that you know, saving hundreds of kilobytes starts to become a, a real selling point. Um, later on, I converted, as, as I was saying, I, I was trying to convert the uh, Radix tree to the X-ray. Um, so we, we, we got an extra one bit, big deal. Um, but more importantly, we embedded a spin lock in the X-ray. And what this let us do was change the API. So Rus one of the things Rusty's API did was it said, you are no longer responsible for your own locking. We will take care of locking the, uh, the, X the, um, the IDA for you. Um, but he had one global spin lock that everybody used. Uh, whereas because, uh, I, because I was piggybacking from the, on the X-ray work, uh, there was now one spin lock per IDA. So that was a nice uh, scalability improvement, but not so much interesting for an Internet of Things uh, embedded sort of uh, process. I ended up getting rid of the old API that uh, Tejan had put in. Um, there were only seven users of it left and every single one of them got a little bit simpler um, by converting it to using the, uh, the new API. Um, my API is uh, slightly simpler than Rusty's. Um, in, in fact, I ended up re-implementing Rusty's simple API on top of my simple API, which is now the only API. So it's no longer called the simple API, it's just called the API. Um, the, uh, the, the pre-allocation API, uh, that, that, that's just gone away. You, 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 you tell the, uh, the IDA what, what GFP flags it should use and it takes care of doing all of the locking for you and everything is great. Um, so what's left to do? Um, I've, 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 I've made these improvements, they've got merged. What's left? Um, we can fiddle around with this a bit. There's, there's some cases where we could allocate fewer than 128 bytes for initial allocations. It's, it might be worth doing. You know, may, may, maybe we could save 64 bytes at a time for some IDAs, but you know, given, given that there were only three IDAs, and that was on a laptop, uh, that we're using more than, um, more, more than 30 bits, it's like, well, maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. Um, one of the things we might like to do is have more efficient allocation of IDs which start at one. I know we're all computer scientists in this room, we love starting counting at zero, um, but sometimes we're dealing with human beings and so it's more, uh, if more effective to start numbers counting from one. Um, the, the API allows this. You, you say, here is my start number, here is my end number, don't try to, you know, don't, don't allocate outside this range. Uh, so you just say, okay, start number one. Um, but it's actually pretty inefficient uh, because it has to you know, cut off the beginning and say, okay, ignore those and, and then start counting from the middle. Um, this is actually more of a problem with the IDR than with the IDA, uh, but just because IDAs never grow all that big. 
Uh, but it, it, it does offend me slightly that uh, we, we can't start at one or just start counting as an arbitrary number. Um, sometimes that's, uh, that's more useful. Uh, so I, I've, I've been vaguely thinking about it on and off. I, I, I just haven't, I haven't felt strongly enough about it to actually um, do anything about that yet. One of the things that many of our other APIs for this kind of thing have is, is an iterator. There is currently no way to say, for each bit that is set, or each allocated bit in the IDA, do this loop. And the reason I haven't introduced this yet is that, we don't, is that I haven't found any current users in the kernel which would benefit from it. And I'm getting kind of sick of looking at every broken device driver in the kernel. <laughs> looking for ways that uh, they could be made better. Um, we also don't have any users that I know of which would benefit from having a cyclic allocation. So uh, a cyclic allocation, you say, um, here's the start, here's the end, and here's the cursor of where I am in the middle. Try and allocate starting from my cursor, get to the end. If there, if there, aren't, if there aren't any free bits up to there, wrap around to the beginning and start trying to allocate from there. We don't, as far as I know, we don't have any users who want that yet. Uh, we have that facility in the IDR. We don't have it in the IDA. If we did have it in the IDA, would anybody benefit? Again, I haven't found any users for that functionality yet. Doesn't mean they don't exist. If I'm talking to someone who says, oh, I have a driver which would benefit from that, tell me, and I will add it for you. One of the things I have been asked for is a more general um, thing that I've been calling the X bit map, where you, because obviously this, this is storing one bit per ID, um, one could implement this on top of a generic uh, bit map. And what, what, what functionality would a bit map have? Well, it would have things like bit map and, bit map or, where you could combine uh, two bit maps together and do something useful with it. Um, I, I saw a gentle eye roll from, uh, <laughs> from one of my good friends in the audience. Um, I, there, there is actually a user for this. Um, this is uh, Kent Overstreet's uh, Bcache FS. He wants to keep essentially an arbitrary sized, uh, automatically resizing bitmap. Um, but Bcache FS is not yet in the kernel, so I, I don't have any motivation to merge code that has no user. Indeed. This is discouraged by Linux kernel development rules. You don't merge things until there's a facility, until there's a user of them. So there's a bit of a chicken egg on that. Um, and maybe I should just leave all this alone. I mean, you know, I've, 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 I've done my part. Rusty did his part back in 2011. I've, I did my part in 2018. I could just walk away at this point, right? I could, I could leave it. I've, I've, I've made my improvement, and you know, maybe somebody else can. Uh, give a talk next year about the, thing, the improvements they've made to the IDA. That would be fun. But I was thinking about, you know, the, the, the topic of this conference is Internet of Things, and um, so I, I interpret that to be, you know, tiny devices. How, 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 how might we allocate IDs better for tiny devices? And, 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 and this idea came to me. We could have a centralized ID allocator, because sometimes you just need an ID which is almost certainly unique. And this will give you four billion IDs before it gives you one that isn't unique. Or, um, I mean, depending how you use it, four billion IDs might last you. I mean, if you allocate 10 IDs per second, it's gonna take 13 and a half years until it wraps. Um, I don't have too many devices that stay up for 13 years. Uh, the power tends to go out, or um, if it's my phone, it runs out of battery, or you know, there's, it's not, it's not likely to happen. I mean, yes, some things happen far more often than 10 times a second, but if we were allocating, I don't know, USB device numbers, it, it's really hard to plug and unplug a USB device 10 times a second. Um, and if you do, I think the connector's going to wear out long before <laughs> we run out of IDs. So something this simple, which, which is going to take up four bytes globally, um, this could be a really effective allocator to have. But we, but we, need, to, we need to test out this theory. Right? We, we need to find some places in the kernel that say, actually, yes, I, I, I want to do this. 
Um, and obviously it will be shared between all of them, but if you just need a unique ID, something that the user can copy and paste, then this is good. If it's something the user is going to actually look at and read, maybe we don't want to do this because users would like short numbers, small numbers. Um, you know, if, 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 if there's one digit that's different in, you know, and it's the 23rd digit in, in, in the number, it's like, well, you know, are, are they really going to notice? A six and an eight look pretty similar in some fonts. You know, it, it, this, this may not be a good idea. I don't know. One other way I thought of uh, saving memory is uh, in, in the Linux block layer. Uh, the Linux block layer uses something called an S bitmap, the scalable bitmap. And the scalable bitmap tra trades off uh, memory in order to be more uh, scalable. So each CPU gets its own subset of IDs, and when you try and allocate on CPU A, you will get an ID in this range, and when you try and allocate on CPU B, you'll get an ID in that range, which is great for those of us who have uh, SMP devices like our phones, or, or we have maybe a server that has you know, multiple uh, physical CPUs, um, and there's no question that the Linux block layer should have this. But for an embedded device that only has one CPU or has uh, four very, very tightly coupled CPUs where they're all sharing the same level of cache, um, this is overkill. So this API is, is, is the right, right API for the functionality. But maybe we should have a different backend implementation based on the IDA um, if a config option is set to say this is going to be used on a, on a small. The the uh, the, the sysadmin has has said, build me a kernel that is as small as possible. And I wanted to encourage those uh, who are interested to jump in and contribute. Right, um, if 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 you come from a proprietary. Uh, system and your uh, your device driver triggers a bug somewhere in the uh, in, 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 in the kernel then well you're, you're, you're kind of stuck right but don't stay in, in, in your lane jump in trace trace these bugs into the core kernel look at where we allegedly skillful kernel developers have made mistakes because we all make mistakes um, you could try and fix it yourself. But at least tell someone you found the problem, right? Don't, 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 don't keep it to yourself. Um, you know, fixing, a, a, fixing problems in core code helps everybody, including Acme Corp's main uh, competitor. Uh, but that's, that's okay. But there is an almost unlimited amount of work to do, uh, not just tracking down bugs, not just tracking down performance bugs and memory bugs and, and memory consumption bugs, but um, you know, in terms of designing APIs which are easy to use, that's hard, it's really hard. <laughs> I spend a lot of time trying to do it, I still get it wrong. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't say I, I'm a device driver developer, or I'm only a device driver developer. I, I, my, my, my heart sinks whenever I read somebody say that in an email. Oh no, I can't work on a core MM bug. I'm just a device driver developer. I, 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 I feel sad because it's, it's the wrong attitude to have. We are all in this together. We're all trying to make a better kernel. And to hear somebody say, I'm I'm not worthy of contributing. It, it's, it's, it breaks my heart, it really does. Um, so I don't want to hear anyone say that. Anyone in this room, I don't want to hear you say that. I want you to dive in and help out. Um, because there is, you know, we, we, we have been working on this kernel for coming up on 30 years. It's, there's so much work still to be done. It's, 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 it's still not done. Um, and, you know, I want to say Oracle are hiring in order to help people make Linux even better. So if, you, uh, if you're intrigued, you can come talk to me about jobs at Oracle. Um, there's something up on the, uh, the jobs boff wiki page. Um, I love working at Oracle. Thank you.
Any questions? So have you considered audit records as a good thing to have? Con uh, considered what, sorry? Oh, audit records. Uh, Bit records. Yes, yeah. because yeah. there's lots and lots and lots of them. Mm. And you could have a system up for decades generating audit records because those they do go into an environments that um, both care about auditing and run for a long time. Yeah. Uh, that's a place where you could definitely have overflow. Yeah, I, I would suggest that audit, <clears throat> that the audit mechanism on such a system should probably not use a 32-bit unsigned int in order to generate an audit ID record number. Now, what should it use? I mean, should it use a 64-bit a, a number? Is that good enough? I don't, yes, I, 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 I don't know either. It, it's, it's an interesting question because maybe the answer is that we have an API which on a server on something which is likely to be up for decades we, we, we do return a 64-bit number and on some with, with a complicated API then ensure something is never reused um, but on a, a, a something you know an embedded heart rate monitor that's not going to generate very many audit records doesn't bother I'm sorry one big audit. Let's hope it generates zero big audit records. <laughs> but yes, one. <laughs> Any other questions? Seems to me that even though you're calling it an IDA, it's really just a bitmap management system. Um, have you thought of renaming it and just putting some synthetic sugar over the top so it can be looked for whenever else you're using bitmaps? X-bitmap facility, so perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, it is something I've been thinking about. But with, without any users in kernel, I'm, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to do that today. Um, maybe. Yes, it's a renaming. Um, and, and then you, you, you put the IDA API over the top of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's interesting how our expectations change with the naming of things. Because when, when, when I tell you I have a generic bitmap facility, you're like, oh, well, then I want to do bitmap-like things to it. I, I want to set bits, clear bits, and bitmaps, or bitmaps, uh, create an inverse of them, all, all, all those kinds of things. Um, but when, when, when you have an IDA, it's like, well, I want to allocate, and I want to free, uh, and maybe iterate. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really powerful. The language is really powerful in this, in this instance that you start to think of all these new things that you can do with it once it has a different name. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've, I have actually posted an X-Bitmap uh, implementation to the Linux kernel mailing list. Um, and I haven't had too much interest in it other than from Kent who originally asked for it. Um, so yeah, th this is really just, the, the code is out there. It's, it's looking for interest. Um, so yeah, if, if, if you've got something that you think of that can use it, I, I can imagine that we probably have a few places in the kernel which implement their own resizing bitmaps today, uh, which could use a general facility. It's a question of uh, grepping through the kernel tree, trying to find them, and then trying to persuade their authors that they want to take their tested code and instead use my untested code. Except I have a test suite, but there's not, it's not a very detailed test suite, so. <laughs> There may, there, there may still be bugs, but there is a test suite. And also, one of the things I did in my um, rewrite of the IDA was add an IDA test suite, which we, had, which we just didn't have before. So it is at least lightly tested, and, um, the, it, in, and indeed, I moved the IDA test suite into the kernel. It's now in lib slash test underscore IDA dot C. Uh, so every time um, zero day builds it and boots it, um, the, the, the test suite runs. And you, can, and you can also build it in user space, so you, you can iterate quickly on the uh, on, on uh, changes you're making to it. I'm quite proud of it. <laughs> so that's it.